In his 1902 magnum opus, The Varieties of Religious Experience, the American philosopher William James, he defined religion. He defined it as the feelings, acts, and experiences of individual men in their solitude in relation to whatever they may consider the divine. Now for James, religion's essence was not to be found in sacraments, not in ritual, not in scripture, not in communal worship. To the contrary, a person had to determine for him or herself what he or she considered divine. And that person should do that, not in a church, not in a synagogue, not in a mosque, but in solitude. And William James was not a Jew. He may have attended weddings or other life cycle events and rites of passages during his life, but he never celebrated a simcha. He never relied on the presence of 10 people to navigate the mourning process. He, he couldn't have understood the impact of beating his chest and crying out to God as an individual, al lefanecha, for the sins I've committed against you, while also being accompanied by hundreds of others beseeching with the same exact language. Since collectively standing at Mount Sinai, communal experience has been the primary medium between the Jewish people and God. Our religious tradition is the antithesis of solitude, and as philosopher Martin Buber eloquently reminded, God exists in the spaces between people in relationship. And the past months have underscored this 3,000-year-old truth, inspiring our B'nai of Eve community to implement a variety of creative initiatives to simulate community virtually. And despite our online successes, of which there have been many, William James, his words haunt us. Jewish life and the Torah cannot live on a computer screen alone. This is my first time in this space on this bima since the second week of March, and I can't describe how good it feels. Now, there's no end date to the COVID-19 pandemic forcing us all to learn how to live with it while simultaneously waiting and praying to defeat it. And this week, Broward County entered phase one of their reopening plan. And it gives us an opportunity to look at a calendar, determine our own plans, and We've heard from many of you about your thoughts regarding how we move into this next phase and we're taking your suggestions, we're taking your concerns into consideration. Our executive director, Lynn Balaban, she's working tirelessly with our staff, our synagogue board on the logistics of what it means to resume in-person gatherings at B'nai Aviv. And it's important for us to consider the unpredictability, the fluidity of the COVID era. Regulations, requirements, protocols, they seem to shift daily, making long-term planning a real challenge. A reopening task force headed by our president, Jamie Cohen, executive director, Lynn Balaban and myself, and comprised of medical, legal, and healthcare professionals has been established to help guide us as we move forward. Now, I'd like to give you a brief update on what to expect as we head into summer. Our B'nai Aviv summer camp is scheduled to begin on June 15th. And our camp directors, Mindy Bernstein and Todd Morchelis, they're following all the guidelines provided by the appropriate organizations to ensure a safe and healthy environment. And these guidelines, they are strict and they require significant efforts from our facilities and camp staff. They include, but are not limited to extensive cleaning protocols, a reduced number of campers per room, no traveling field trips, no shared classrooms. Camp will be restricted to the school wing of our building, the multi-purpose room, the ballroom, but they will still be able to utilize the outdoors and for a better understanding of the protocols required to open our camp as of right now, please see the link embedded in the online written version of this message. B'nai Aviv is also preparing to open this sanctuary in the coming weeks for Saturday Shabbat services. Now a detailed list of requirements for attendance, changes in ritual practice, they'll be distributed before our reopening. Social distancing protocols, they require us to rethink certain customs that were once a part of our worship experience, but communal prayer, Torah. Torah will hopefully be returning to B'nai Aviv. And some of the changes you'll see, there'll be rows sectioned off to increase physical distancing, the clergy being further back on the bima, the request for daveners to bring your own talesim and kipot. And we're postponing all kedushas and l'chaims and activities, and we'll instead be joining together for worship only. Individuals with underlying conditions should consider not participating. Online engagement will continue. 
classes, meetings, tutoring, morning and evening services, Kabbalat Shabbat, social programs, they will remain virtual most likely through the summer. There will be no on-site meetings, programs, or events. As increased attendance, it requires additional extensive cleaning and usage of very limited supplies. Outdoor engagement will begin. Florida summers, they're hot. They're equally unpredictable. Nonetheless, there currently is far more latitude, far less logistical planning necessary for outdoor in-person activity. And our staff, our lay leadership is committed to affirming our sense of kihila and will work creatively to do so, even if it means utilizing our extensive outdoor space. Now, while we enjoy having all of you come and visit us, we ask that you refrain from coming into the building at this time during the week. We will let you know when our business office will be open for your visits again. And in the meantime, we'll be happy to handle any of your concerns or requests by phone, email, or Zoom. Anyone who must come into the building is required to make an appointment, wear a face mask at all times, maintain social distancing of six feet from others. Hand sanitizer will be available when you enter the building. If you're not feeling well, please stay home. My friends, prior to COVID, a synagogue's existential doubts, they were almost always related to finances. For the past three generations, a Jewish community's survival was predicated on a successful high holiday appeal, balancing a budget. And with the exception of our remaining survivors, none of us, none of us had experienced the spiritual crisis of an enemy trying to make it impossible to live as a Jew. And while our adversary is not an inquisitor, it's not a Cossack, it's not a pogrom, it's not a Nazi. The struggle and the test, it's very similar. We find ourselves aligned with generations of our ancestors who had to reach out and actively claim Torah, actively claim Jewish life as it was being taken away from them. And like them, we have to adapt, be creative, and take drastic vigilant measures to safely be together as Jews. And each of you plays an invaluable role in the story of the Jewish people and in our B'nai Aviv family. You belong here. And we pray that we will be able to safely see you all in person again soon.